right, so welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about the white crappie, also known as Pomoxis annularis. Uh, these things came around in North America about 10 million years ago. Uh, interesting fun fact is that fossils are actually found alongside mastodon fossils. This is one of the ways that they know that mastodons spent at least a good portion of their life in and around lakes and uh, things of that nature feeding on aquatic plants. Some common names are uh, calico bass, speckled bass, paper mouse, silver perch, uh, tin mouth, sacolet. There's a lot of other ones. The name sacolet is traditionally used uh, mainly in the south uh, like Louisiana and Alabama uh, deriving from Cajun French in which it means milk bag referring to the color of its flesh. Native range, so looking at the map here in the orange, you can see their native range and the marine, maroon color uh, represents their current or introduced range. They are considered invasive in a few fisheries, but there are no programs that are really out there that are declaring all out war on them. Fisheries that take them the most serious uh, as invasive predators is rivers in the Pacific Northwest, as they are known to prey on the fry of the year salmon. But biologists will admit that there's little to no data on this, so they really don't have any idea what the impact of crappie is on those populations. In short, they're a welcome addition virtually everywhere that they're put. It should also be noted that they have a high tolerance to salt and can withstand some pretty low oxygen environments as well, so I thought that was interesting. Adults feed primarily on other fishes, such as minnows and fry of the year bait fish. They will also subsist on crustaceans and insects. The young ones, however, are filter feeders, subsisting on zooplankton and larvae, as well as insects. Uh, they typically start feeding on larger prey around their second year, however. Spawn takes place in May or June, and temperatures range from 65 degrees to 70 degrees. Uh, crappie are nest builders. The male constructs it. The female lays between 3,000 and 15,000 eggs, although some of the bigger females can lay as many as 150,000. This is important to remember later. These are usually constructed in about four or five feet of water, uh, but they can be constructed in much deeper water. Uh, sometimes crappies uh, will spawn as deep as 20 feet. That's something to keep in mind for later as well when we start talking about pond and lake management. And the nests are typically about three feet wide. If, uh, it's actually a pretty big nest if you think about it. Like I'm, I have about a six foot two wingspan. And if I take my arms and wrap them all the way around and make a big circle and just touch the tip of my fingers, uh, you could add about eight to 10 inches all the way around that. And that's how big their nests are. So they're pretty big nests. Eggs hatch after about three to five days. Males guard the nest, which is usually constructed in grass and other vegetation until the fry leave which on average is about three to five days. After they hatch, white crappies reach maturity in about two or three years. However, some fisheries in Texas reported them spawning in their first year. Growth rates and age. So I found it to be very important to put age in this one because a lot of people don't know that crappies don't actually live that long. So uh, they live about eight to 10 years on the high end. Uh, some die in as few as three to four years. Uh, but they do some eating and growing in that time, and I'm going to tell you how much. Crappie growth is almost determined entirely by the amount of food available. So how much forage you have available in a pond or a lake is going to determine heavily how much these fish grow. So you might want to keep that in mind. A lot of this info comes from a guy uh, who was tasked. He was the lake manager at Smithville Lake in Missouri, in which he was tasked with stocking the lake. Uh, crappie in the southern states, it should be noted, uh, they do grow at a slightly higher rate. Uh, good growing fish should be around four inches by the end of their first year. Second year, seven inches. Uh, by age three, around nine to ten inches. Uh, a 12 inch fish is going to be around five years old on average. Now, obviously, some of these fish are going to grow much faster, which that's the case with, with all fish. There's always going to be uh, populations of them that grow faster than others for various reasons. In the case of Smithville Lake, they found most of their crappie weren't living past three years of age and had to put an emergency length limit in place to save the population. Subsequently, they discovered it was very possible to overfish crappie on a big lake. What? What the f And just for reference, Smithville is 7,190 acres, by the way. It's not enormous, but it's still a very big lake. People tend to get mad when you tell them that. They don't like to be told, hey, you can actually overfish a body of water. I don't know why. You can overfish anything in any body of water. You can overfish the ocean. 
Stocking and management. Now, before we get started, I just want to make this perfectly clear. I am not a fisheries expert. Uh, so basically, all of this information that I'm about to talk about uh, comes directly from biologists and fisheries and wildlife management experts. This is their job. So if you're getting ready to stock your lake and you say, well, Dave said this. No, you need to consult a professional, someone that does this for a living. Okay, because your area may be different than other areas. This is just an overview so you guys get an idea to hopefully reconsider a few things. So let's just get into it. Uh, if you have a pond, I would seriously reconsider not putting crappies in it. Seriously. Uh, they have a very erratic spawning behavior. Uh, this can lead to some serious problems down the road. Uh, for example, for three years, you may see very little spawning behavior, uh, especially in already established bass and bluegill ponds. Then all of a sudden, bam, those 50 crappie you stocked in your one and a half acre pond just turned into a thousand, ultimately ruining your lifelong green pond and its ecosystem. The best way to fix that is introducing 25 to 30 adult bass, 10 to 14 inches in order to cull those smaller crappies. But then you can have a bass problem. Uh, they're going to become overpopulated and stunted. Uh, but your crappie population will become rebalanced at that point, and then you're ready to grow some big crappies. But you're not going to grow very many. Almost none of them will make it to adulthood after that. You see a pattern? You can't have both. If you're one of these people and you're trying to grow big bass and big big crappies all in the same pond, I, I would strongly urge you not to do that. Not to even attempt to do that. Meanwhile, your bluegills are feeling the weight, the full weight of this struggle the entire time that's going on. Uh, another thing to consider is crappie or sight predators. They won't do well in ponds with low visibility. Uh, black crappie are used almost exclusively in small lakes and ponds uh, due to their slightly lower breeding potential, but are still considered prolific breeders. Now, if you must have them in your pond, if you, if you don't have any other option this is what you have to have because you're obsessed with them or whatever. You have some options. Option number one, hybrids. Hybrid crappie are a mix of white and black crappie. Okay, these fish have significantly lower spawn and growth rates. Note, growth rates also. A uh, few of these fish even reach actual adulthood, uh, mostly due to predation, which in turn keeps their numbers down. If they're not available in your local hatchery, you have another option. Build one badass pond. What I mean by that, you need depth, 20 feet or more. You need cover. Sunken cedar trees and fallen timber, root wads make great habitat. You can also build habitat. There's actually quite a bit of stuff online that you can look up. Uh, some really cool stuff. Make sure that you have a pre-established population of bass and bluegills as crappie spawn usually a whole month ahead of bass and their fry get a big head start, allowing them to take over. This is one of the ways that crappies can outcompete bass, is they can have babies sooner and more of them. There is a third option, and it's, in my opinion, it's the best option, right? If you really have to have crappie, you'd almost want to build a separate pond, an additional pond, and have that pond just for crappies, right? If you do that, the best way to control crappies is actually by using hybrid stripers, okay, also known as wipers. But this really only works in crappie-only ponds. What you'll want to do in that case is you'll want to stock your pond uh, with shad and minnows and maybe even shiners or something else like that. And you're going to give it a year, maybe even two, to let those things get established. Then you're going to put crappies in and you're never going to put an adult crappie in. Okay, you're going to put all fingerling crappies in, uh, three to four inches, five to six would be all right, and you're going to give them a year. And then once you've done that, then you're going to stock with hybrid striped bass, and you're not going to put very many of them in. And what those things are going to do, they're going to keep the number of crappie fry down to help keep their numbers down. One of the reasons that you never put adult crappies in is once you've done that, you have no way of controlling their numbers. You have no way of, con of keeping a hold of that population. In other words, it gives you a good baseline to go off of. Typical stocking numbers 
are 25 to 100 fingerlings per surface acre of lake depending on the forage species available. Okay, so that's things like fathead minnows and shiners and threadfin shad, stuff like that. Threadfin actually got brought up quite a bit uh, as being one of the best options as far as forage species. Only a few of these fish will ever actually see sexual maturity. So if you put a hundred in, if you, if you have a five acre lake or pond, whatever you want to call it, you're going to put 500 of these things in, 500 crappies very few of them will actually reach maturity. So that's something to keep in mind. So quite oftentimes people will put crappies in a pond and they'll be like, it's been three years, it's been four years. Uh, I caught some crappies the year before, we had a great time and then I come back this year and I can't catch anymore. You know, I even have people who, who know a lot about them, they can't catch it anymore. Well, just keep in mind, they might've all died or they could have created a cycle where a lot of the older, the original stocking fish died and you just got new ones coming up and they just haven't reached the size yet that you can catch them, but they're still there. So that's something to keep in mind. So don't rush off right away and, and put more crappie in thinking that uh, they're all gone. No, these are just the erratic cycles that we were talking about earlier. This is one of the ways that you can really get in trouble. Uh, as far as ruining your ecosystem goes with these fish. So that's something that I really wanted to touch on. Uh, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you liked it. I plan on doing a lot more. If you guys know what fish you want to see next, leave a comment down below. If you guys have an experience of, of similar things happening in your own personal ponds and lakes, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, if you guys have any conflicting data that might contradict something that I've said, I would love to hear about that as well. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about subscribing. It's free, and it really helps my channel out a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.